word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another project video. Uh, thanks to JLC PCB for <laughs> supporting my insanity. Uh, as you saw in one of my recent videos, I've been playing around with touch sensitive PCBs and I've always wanted to make something uh, for my sister because she, um, you know, when she was younger, she used to play the piano quite a bit and she got really good at it. And um, she doesn't really play anymore as far as I know. But uh, I figured it'd be kind of a, a fun present to make her this. And let me just pull one of these boards out. So going off the vein of the touch sensitive uh, PCBs I've been designing, I designed a touch sensitive little uh, polyphonic piano. And basic features of this board, um, no exposed metal. These are, you know, under the solder mask and, and the, um, the silk screen. And all these are individual buns. There are 13 in total, basically one octave. And um, yeah, that's, that's exactly what, what my uh, previous boards have done in terms of like the layout in general, other than the key shape is different, clearly. Uh, it's the board is actually really nice. I, I love this. It's sort of a matte uh, black solder mask with um, I opted for the gold enig uh, coating because it just looks so nice, so shiny. Uh, other features of this board runs off a CR2032, uh, has a power switch here. Here's the microprocessor that does everything. That's an AT Mega 328P which I throw pretty much at all my projects now. <laughs> and there's a SMD uh, piezo, like a little buzzer. Actually, I think the one that I ended up ordering was a uh, electromechanical. Um, and we have some indicator LEDs there. Other than that, we have uh, two ports. We have uh, ICSP, so if you need to burn the bootloader on, or this uh, port right here, which is just a serial port so that if the bootloader is already burnt on, you can just use a cheap serial programmer. On the back, there's pretty much nothing other than, you know, I just call it what it is, Polyphonic Touch Piano version 1.0. Uh, you'll notice the kind of grid-shaped uh, ground infill, um, as was recommended in a lot of uh, documentation that I read about touch sensing boards. I've waited for these for quite a while. I've been really excited to get on this. So let's uh, solder one up real quick. I'm not going to bore you guys. I've done so many videos where it's just me soldering and speeding through that. Uh, I actually wanted to change things up and talk more about the software and how this works because I think that's actually far more interesting than just soldering. Ta-da! Okay, so here's the finished board. I've already programmed it and I've played around with it a little bit. Uh, things to note, um, I pretty much recess the power switch so you don't accidentally bump it or break it off because these are quite fragile, but you can still definitely get your finger in there and actuate it. I think that was a good idea. Um, the lights, um, they're kind of bright-ish when you're run. There's a caveat, basically. There's, there's kind of an Achilles heel to this design that I'll get to in a second, but so assembly went pretty straightforward. No issues there. Um, I have a temporary like debug header soldered here so I could debug the software. Uh, everything went really well. These uh, battery contacts I got from, um, what was it, uh, JLC PCB's um, component distribution branch. I forget what it's called. Um, I got it from them. It's a little bit cheap. It was literally cheap. <laughs> so I, I, it's exactly what I expected. Uh, it's just a piece of metal. It's not very secure. It's not great. So I think on the next iteration, um, I might do away with this or find a better mounting solution or something. Uh, but yeah, I'll give you a demo of it. It currently is running off of a single uh, three volt lithium battery. Okay, so I discovered something very weird. Um, I've been sitting here trying to get it to work. Apparently, I guess something with the silicone on the back when it's touching the back of the board, the keys don't work quite correctly. So I'm gonna definitely have to design some kind of case so that um, 
you know, there's just an air gap or something behind it. But if I just hold it up like this, it works perfectly. And the cool thing was, I'm very proud of this, I uh, implemented a uh, four-note polyphony, so... <laughs> and it, it sounds fantastic. Basically how I achieve that is I have um, one output per possible note that it could play, and I have some summing resistors, and it, they sum together, these are 100 ohm resistors, and then from that one output from four, it feeds a speaker. So it, this is kind of a mm, not so elegant way of achieving that, but it works. <laughs> and it's really fun to play with too. So yeah, um, the LED, the blue LED, because I'm running off of a single battery, the blue one is not so bright when it's lit and it dims as I hit more notes, and it basically goes off when I'm playing four notes. Other things to note, there are some limitations with the software, because I only have four notes, obviously, I had to implement like a queuing system. Uh, so it's basically first come, first serve. So whatever keys you press, It'll play up to four, and then if I hit a fifth key, it'll ignore it, basically. The touch sensing actually works pretty well when I'm not putting it on, you know, a mat. It's really weird. I've, I've put this on, like, a wooden desk, and it works perfectly. Something must be up with the silicone. For some reason, it's messing with the, um, like, electric field. Because it works, obviously, very well when I'm just holding it things I think that um, could be improved on the second revision. Uh, this one battery is, I think, just barely sufficient to get this to work and to work reliably. Uh, sometimes if the battery voltage starts to sag, like when I hit multiple notes, sometimes it'll like crash the processor or lock it up or something weird uh, happens. And I don't think it's a software because when I run this off of the programming header with five volts, I don't get that issue. So there's something clearly uh, going wrong with that. The implementation of the polyphony, uh, if that is a word, hopefully it is, <laughs> is rather limited because it's it's interrupt based. Uh, you can read more details about it on the uh, the project page. I'll link down below the hackaday.io project page where I discuss exactly how this works. But in a nutshell, I have a 40 kilohertz um, interrupt that's running on the processor uh, continually. And it basically compares, um, there are four counters, one for each of the possible channels it could be playing, and there's four compare values. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm changing the compare value, and the counters are always counting up, uh, basically like saw, sawtooth counts. Um, and whenever they reach the compare value, they'll toggle the output if that channel is enabled and you know told to play a certain note. And so that's generally how it works. And it works decently well, uh, with the caveat of because this is, you know, um, not such a super fast processor, and um, I pretty much have a max ceiling of 16 megahertz. Uh, in order to get reasonable resolution with this method, uh, you kind of have to play notes around a kilohertz or lower. If you try to go too much higher than that, it can go up to like maybe 2K, something like that. Uh, you start to lo like drastically lose resolution to the point where, you know, you can't resolve less than like 500 hertz or something up at the high end. Uh, so that's definitely a limitation, but as long as you stay below. For instance, uh, this C is about 550 hertz, I believe, and this C is about 1,000 so kilohertz. So you can see here. Uh, and that was sort of an ideal range for, uh, number one, for this piezo. This piezo has a resonant uh, point, I think, at about 4K. 
so it's it's lower it's below that so i think it's attenuating because it's you know outside of you know what it's really designed for uh so it's not as loud as it could be number one number two running off of this three volts i think is a limiting factor so what i'm probably going to do on the next revision is move the battery onto the back and put two of them and put two in series so i get up to six volts which the at mega will run happily off of uh in fact as it starts drawing more power and you know the led and whatnot and everything running the voltage will actually sag so these batteries have pretty high internal series resistances uh so i think that'll be fine uh, running it at you know six volts with two cells off fresh batteries and that'll give you much louder audio so what i'm actually going to do is switch this off and i'm going to use this um programming dongle that i designed before and power it off of a power bank And you can see when it's um, powered off of the power bank at 5 volts, um, it runs just fine. Sort of. Yeah. So clearly there's also some dependency on, you know, the touch sensitive nature with, um, with the input voltage. But it is noticeably louder. One thing I also noticed with this speaker is it kind of rattles or something. There must be like, you know, a resonant when I, especially if I go kind of like higher than about this note, there's like a slight mechanical rattling sound or something. So maybe there's some kind of resonant point there that I'm hitting. Um, not really supposed to, I guess. Sounds like some kind of chirping. It's really weird. Anyway, um, so I guess I can just play you guys stuff. <laughs> Give me a sec. I'm going to get this set up with a better angle so I can actually play with my right hand. Yes, <laughs> I've been sitting here, I, I meant to film like a couple minutes of footage, and I just kind of forgot that the camera was in front of me, and I just started playing around with this, and it's already been like 10 minutes. So anyway, I'm going to cut the video right here before I get lost in another half hour of me playing with this. So yeah, like I said, this is only the first revision. I already have improvements in mind, and uh, yeah, things that I I don't think this is ready for. Uh, gift status just yet it's close though uh, just a few hardware tweaks i think the software is probably fine uh, but definitely a few hardware tweaks uh, board files will be down below well the link to the project page will include the board files the gerbers the pcb the schematic uh, everything you need to replicate this and build your own as well as the software as well obviously now keep in mind this is a first revision you can you know go out and build this right now uh, as of the posting of this video, or if you'd like to wait, I will have a, a second revision of this with some fixes uh, in the works and just make it a little bit nicer, I think, in the end. So anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one.